Valuing a firm is extremely difficult to do well. Firms are complicated entities engaging in many activities that we only get limited information about. Moreover, firms last an indefinite length of time. Most of their important value-creating activities haven't even happened yet. So I'm going to discuss two common methods of valuation. Each has pluses and minuses. The first is referred to as a multiples-based approach to valuation. This is easier, but that's also its biggest weakness. It's too simple to capture many of the potentially relevant factors that should affect a firm's value. Here, we select a performance measure for our firm that we hope is representative of its future performance, and then we figure out what firms with similar levels of performance are selling for. For example, we might look at the earnings per share of the firm and determine that similar firms, say firms in the same industry who are growing at approximately the same rate, are selling for 10 times their earnings. We then estimate that the value of our firm is 10 times our earnings. This method relies on finding good comparison firms and it puts a lot of faith in that one measure of performance we're using. Some people like to use the firm's earnings to do this, others prefer its revenue, and many people like to use performance measures in between, like EBITDA, which stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The second approach is more theoretically correct, but it's much harder to do. This is called the present value or the discounted cash flow method. It's based on the idea that the value of a firm today is the present value of the cash flows the firm will generate in the future. In principle, this means forecasting the firm's future cash flows for an indefinite period of time, possibly decades out into the future. As this is impractical to do, it's more common to first forecast the firm's future cash flows over a relatively short period of time, like the next three to seven years. Then we add a terminal value that's based on a simple assumption about how the firm will grow in the long term. The accuracy of this approach depends on how good our forecasts are.